Hello, everybody. I'd just like to say thanks for uh, joining in. Um, just to let you know, I'm Tim Percy um, with uh, I'm what they call Navionics Kayak Specialists. Um, Navionics has asked all their marine specialists to do uh, a series of webinars on uh, things that they thought would be relevant uh, for people um, in their in their fields, anyways. So uh, I decided to, one of my webinars I decided to pick was rigging your kayak. Uh, I hope to give you some ideas on uh, a few things to uh, set up your kayak, get it ready for fishing, and maybe give you some tips that you didn't uh, think about prior to. Uh, let me see here. I think we'll uh, start going just to let you know. Everybody is muted, so if you happen to have a, uh, a microphone, you won't be able to speak just because it gets a little difficult sometimes hearing everybody at once. So there is the option in your control panel there to type in a question if you want to ask a question, and we'll try and break every so often to get through the questions. Um, I have uh, Tashame Moore helping me out with this, and uh, he's going to monitor the questions, and uh, he'll... Uh, pipe in every once in a while and let me know about the questions because it's a little hard to follow back and forth with doing the presentation and keeping an eye on that kind of thing. So uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. All right. Looks like everybody's piling in and I guess we can get started. Uh, just for a little bit of a background, I, I fish, um, I'm actually just on the other side of uh, the U.S. border, uh, just across from Detroit. Uh, I fish the Great Lakes uh, region area, um, predominantly a freshwater fisher, actually more than predominantly. I haven't fished any saltwater. Uh, so I'll try to stay within my comfort zone of what I know in, in regards to rigging in, in that way. Um, I fish both uh, paddle and pedal. Uh, I presently own a couple Hobie uh, Outbacks, or sorry, uh, Hobie Pro Anglers, and I fish out of them. But uh, I have owned uh, a paddle kayak as well. So the first thing I recommend is to take your first trip naked, and I don't mean without clothes, uh, take your first trip out on your new kayak without any rigging. Get get ready uh, and get comfortable with the kayak before you start adding anything to it. Resist the urge to go out and start adding everything to it before you even get out on the water. Uh, get a feel for your new kayak. Once you're out on the water, maybe take one fishing rod out with you. Get an idea of... Um, where you'd like everything to be placed. Get an idea if you've got a paddle kayak, get an idea of where your paddle stroke is going to be and uh, make sure that you don't have anything mounted or any accessories within that paddle stroke. Uh, try to visualize where you want to put your rod holders and your fish finder. Um, get an idea, maybe even take something out, pieces of tape or a marker or whatever and uh, mark down those areas where you think would be best for you. And keep it simple at first. Um, resist adding a whole bunch of uh, accessories to your kayak until until you're comfortable with the kayak and you're comfortable with the layout. And just add what you need when you need it. Uh, when you're going to start rigging your uh, your kayak, there's a few little things that that I like to keep as supplies uh, available. Make things a little easier. Uh, most kayak manufacturers, uh, they're, they use a 1032 uh, thread on their uh, nuts and bolts. Uh, so get yourself a supply of nuts, bolts, locking washers, and, and washers available or when you start doing any, when you start to accessorize it. Uh, I had a difficult find, or difficult time, difficult time finding 1032 threads a lot of the times. It, it just doesn't seem to be readily available around here. Um, I found that uh, the 10, uh, 1024 stainless steel stuff, oh sorry I forgot to mention, make sure it's stainless steel. Um, 
1024 is easier to find it for me, um, but it, like I said, most manufacturers use 1032. Uh, you may may need a, a supply of well nuts. Well nuts, uh, that's what a well nut look, looks like. If you're going to find some areas where you might want to add something, but you can't get in behind it to uh, add a add a nut or a lock washer or locking nut. So you just drill the hole, add the well nut, and it it, it secures itself once you start tightening uh, the bolt into it. I like to use shrink tube on a lot of the stuff that I, uh, a lot of the cords and things that I build uh, just to uh, clean up the ends. And marine goop, no doubt when you're going to be drilling holes in it, you want to make sure that you seal those holes the best you can. Uh, in kayaking, in kayak fishing, we've got a term called leash it or lose it. Always be prepared to dump. Uh, if it's not passenger kayak and it doesn't float, put a leash on it. Uh, you can, there's you can there's a number of uh, manufactured uh, leashes out there that you can that you can purchase um, rod holders or rod uh, leashes. I like to build my own. I go to the dollar store, buy some old uh, foam cord, and uh, this is this foam cord cost me a dollar twenty-five, and I can get two leashes out of it. I just usually take cut it in half, take the ends, uh, tie some wire around, and uh, put some shrink tube over top to seal it all up nice and neat. And you got yourself uh, a couple uh, leashes for under two bucks. A lot of things are. You're going to want to store your tackle somewhere. And that seems to be, uh, there's all kinds of uh, different crates out there, from the H crate to a milk crate. Uh, I happen to have the uh, H crate on my new uh, Opac. This, the uh, black one here is the Black Pack by Yaktak, I think it is. Um, it's a great unit. And then there's the tried and true uh, milk crate that uh, you can accessorize any way you want. They're usually a few bucks, or unless you can find them around for free, um, they go from the H crate and that, or 125, 130 bucks. So, depending on your budget, uh, this was my uh, Ocean Kayak uh, Big Game 2. I happened to find this this box at, at our local Canadian Tire store that was on sale, and it just happened to fill, fill or fill the tank well perfectly. I held it down with uh, some paracord back here, and it worked out great. And a lot of nice storage room, room easy to uh, get in and out of. And here's uh, the H crate that I presently have set up on my kayak. Um, it's great. It's got uh, uh, rod holders built into the ends with uh, with some bungees that will hold your uh, rods in place should you turn over. Or in uh, my case, I lost two rods when I reached back to uh, get my net and it would hook onto the rods and drop them into the drink. Uh, this is a friend of mine's uh, kayak. He's built his own H or his own uh, milk crate. Uh, he's got it all set up, nice and neat, organized. You can purchase uh, manufactured rod holders, for, or you can make your own out of P, uh, PVC if you want. Yeah, saves you a lot of money. Rod holders. I'll be honest with you. The only the only time you really need. Uh, rod holders other than rod, I'm not talking rods to store your rods, I'm talking about holding your rods while you're fishing, is uh, while you're trolling. Uh, that's about the only time that you really have it. If you're if you're casting all the time and everything else, you, you really don't need them. I, I happen to do a lot of trolling, so I, uh, I've got them on my kayak. Uh, the one on the left here, that's uh, made by Ram. Uh, they're, these are very versatile. They they take both bait caster and uh, and spinning rods depending on which end. I I, I use the uh, the Scotties. Uh, 
I like them. They, they'll take both. I, I have my spinning rods and my bait casters in there. And you can lock your rods in if you have to. There's the other um, bazooka tube type style uh, rod holders as well. I don't use them. I just I guess I'm just a little bit of I'm just a little bit nervous about them. I, I just always get that feeling that it, that one fish or one thing will pull it straight out. At them. That's just me. Uh, this is how I presently have uh, my kayak set up for trolling. I've got my both my rod holders on the outside. They're they're set into a position where they're nice and easy to uh, to access my rods should I get a bite, and I can also see my rod tips. Uh, if you start to get your rods behind you, uh, unfortunately, with some kayaks you have no alternative. That's going to be the only place you can put them. But if you can, try to keep them in front of you within reach, reason reasonable reach. It's nice to see your rod tips when you get that bite. Uh, one thing that I've learned is. I happen to have my two rods. I have a left hand and a right handed uh, reel. I, it, I find it a lot easier to uh, reel in a secondary, your second line if you've got a fish on the one line without reach. If I've got a, a right handed reel on my left hand side, I've got to reach across and over and it gets to be a pain to uh, try to reel that line up and out of the way. So I've switched to uh, left-handed and right-handed uh, reels. Uh, this is uh, my big game too. Uh, it happened to come with mounting boards, so it was nice and easy to uh, to add the rod holders. Uh, they were in a position that they were out of out of my way of my paddle stroke, and they were forward, so it worked out great. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about fish finders and chart plotters. I'm not going to get into manufacturers and all that and recommendations, but I'll just give you a little bit of an idea of what my preference is on them. Uh, get a screen size that fits your eyes and your budget. Uh, that being said, that um, uh, the four inch seems to be po uh, popular with uh, a lot of the kayakers, and uh, I have one on my other kayak. It, and, it, uh, it works great, but it's close by to me. Uh, I'm starting to get to an age, though, where my eyesight uh, isn't as great as it used to be. So uh, maybe a 5 or a 7-inch uh, screen would work a lot better for me. Uh, it gives you a little bit more real estate to see. Uh, but the only unfortunate thing is, is uh, it doesn't fit into my budget right now. So, so we're going to stick with a 4-inch. But, uh, hey. yep. Hey, yep. Jim. So, just a quick question for you. Um, um, is I don't know if you've ever attempted to use your iPhone, but how does the iPhone screen compare to your four inch? The iPhone screen seems to be about uh, four inches as yeah, well. Yeah, it is. And actually, if you go up to your iPhone six now, they're a little even bigger. Um, I um, my present kayak though, I, I run an iPad Mini, which is a uh, but I guess you can compare it to about a 10-inch screen. So it gives me lots of real estate, with, with, and it uh, works out great. I run the iPad Mini uh, with the uh, Bexlar Sonar phone uh, and the Navionics app, and, it, and it's working out great. Uh, it gives me a great view of everything. Uh, I have an iPad Mini with a, that is Wi-Fi only, so you have to buy a GPS, uh, Bluetooth GPS unit to go with it to... Um, so it uh, so it can work uh, with the chart plotter, but if you happen to have the 3G models, um, they they have built-in GPS and uh, Navionics now um, works with Android devices, and most of the Android tablets already have the built-in GPS in them. So they're they're a great unit to be uh, to use as well. It gives you uh, a nice big screen to to, to look at and at, probably at the fraction of what it would cost you for that same screen size in uh, a regular uh, fish finder uh, chart plotter. Uh, thank you for that. We got a question from Chad. Yeah. Um, is the side imaging like the new Hummingbird Helix workable on a kayak? Um, uh, side imaging is. Um, I, the, only, the only issue that you've got to do with side imaging is you've got to make sure that that transducer is down and clear of uh, of your kayak. 
most uh, kayaks, I'll show you in, in, in a minute, that um, they have their scupper holes um, that are that are shielded so the side imaging doesn't work well with those. Uh, a friend of mine has side or has uh, a side imaging um, chart plotter or fish finder on his and he has an auxiliary arm that drops down uh, into the water and uh, he gets great imaging that way for it. So it, it does work but you just need um, you just need to get that um, that arm or that transducer clear of any obstructions uh, from your kayak. So you've got to get it to either at the front mount, or front or back of, of your kayak and down below. All right, thank you for that. And, and while we're on the topic of uh, iPads, we have a question from Joel. Yep. And he wants to know what do you use specifically for GPS uh, with your iPad? Uh, for, for the GPS um, Bluetooth one I use is the Garmin Glow. Um, just recently, the um, Apple updated their iPad to uh, 8.3 uh, software, which which caused a bit of a problem uh, with uh, compatibility. Fortunately, the Garmin Glow I found out uh, I found there was an update for the firmware, and uh, I did the update on the firmware, and it, it's working perfectly now. I actually uh, was out with it today, and uh, I think I was out, and I logged about. Uh, 10 miles today with it and uh, worked flawlessly so the Garmin Glow uh, GPS uh, Bluetooth GPS works perfectly with the the iPads uh, I, I, I I prefer a fish finder and shark plotter combo I fish bigger bodies of water um, therefore if I want to get back on my spot again it, it's easier for me to follow my tracks through the chart plotters, um, if you're small, if you if you fish, you know smaller bodies of water that you fish all the time, and you can get right back on your on your honey holes, that's great. But uh, for me, the chart plotter is invaluable. Uh, gets you, uh, like I say, you can mark your waypoints, you can get right back, you can save your tracks. I like them for for many reasons, like like I said with the uh, the uh, Navionics app, uh, I save all my tracks, so it gives me a running tally of uh, everything, the miles that I've logged throughout the whole year, uh, where I've been, how, distance, speed, everything. So that's that's plus with um, the Navionics, you get uh, all the great features that, that come with it. Um, including the the latest chart uh, sonar charts uh, sonar with down skimming Im imaging i i have uh, a down skimming image or i've got down scan as well on my one um, kayak i'll be honest with you <laughs> I, I don't use it a lot it's just uh it, it's nice there it, it, it's nice to get a different view of uh what's down below it gives you a little bit better view of, uh, of the contours and, uh, and any uh, type of uh, brush or wooded areas or any type of rock area anything that you want it gives you a better picture of that but uh, I, I'll be honest with you I don't use it a lot I, I, I strictly stick with my sonar and try to put uh, place the uh, your fish finder within e easy reach. You'll want to play with it every now and again. You'll want to change things. You may, may if you happen to get a get a fish or whatever, you're going to want to mark your waypoint there. Uh, if it, if it's too far forward, it's going to be a pain to uh, reach up and do that. And not only that, but it, it, it's a little harder to see if it's too far forward. Um, I happen to like the. Uh, the RAM mounts just for adjustability. Um, it depending on how the sun's hitting and everything else, you may want to tilt it. You might want to turn it a little bit so that uh, you can see your screen a little bit better. And for me, and anyways, the RAM mounts have always been great. They'll give you a general idea of uh, what the RAM mount looks like. But they make them for everything. They uh, I've got it on my iPad as well. There's a uh, 
one with a regular fish finder on it and this is how I, I have it mounted with my iPad uh, nice and close by uh, like I say you, sometimes the sun will hit it a certain way so you may have to tilt it a little bit just so so you can see it a little bit better uh, mounting your transducer uh, there are basically three ways to mount a transducer in, in a kayak and uh, I've actually done them I've actually had to do all three one is uh, through the scupper mount another is through it with the transducer arm and uh, another is uh, shooting through the hull uh, this is a, a Lorentz uh, scupper mount. You just uh, attach uh, your transducer uh, with the scupper mount. Uh, you got to have your kayak's got to be designed with the um, with a transducer pocket underneath in order to make sure that uh, your transducer isn't below your kayak when you so that it doesn't catch weeds or whatever else or when you go to take it out of uh, your your kayak out you don't end up dragging along uh, the ground yeah you can uh, either use the Lorenz one or you, there's uh, there's a whole bunch of how to's online on how to uh, make your own uh, scupper mount uh, out of piece of PVC there's a few different versions on how to do it it's pretty easy it's cheap, that's for sure. The uh, the Lorentz uh, scupper mount, I think they're probably they run about forty some odd dollars. And uh, when I first got it, <laughs> you'll be shocked that you're paying forty dollars for a few pieces of plastic. But it does work, and it does, it is convenient. Make sure that your transducer will fit into your scupper pocket. Depending on the uh, fish finder that you use and some of the transducers can be fairly large the uh, the Lorentz uh, HDI transducer that I had it took a little bit of work to, to get it up into the pocket it barely fit but it uh, it did fit but it took a little bit of uh, extra work to uh, make it fit up into the uh, into the pocket so make sure that your transducer is going to fit into to your uh, your pocket that your scupper pocket there. Um, Hobie happens to make their their own little uh, Lorentz ready. They call it a scupper hole uh, mount. Transducer arm. Uh, Ram. There, there may be a few other manufacturers out there as well that uh, that make a a, trans, a transducer mount arm. That uh, you basically just mount your transducer to the bottom bottom of it, and you can uh, pop it over to the side, and uh, it they work they work really well. The only issue is sometimes if you're in a weedy area or whatever, you'll grab some weeds and all that. But uh, when you're done, just plop it up, up um, just rotate it up out of the water, and away you go. Uh, here's another here's um, here's space with regards to the side imaging I believe this transducer down here is a, a side imaging transducer and this is what I mean by you've got to get it away from underneath the kayak uh, because it, it needs a, a clear view on either side of it to, to get the image properly so here's uh, how this guy happens to have his setup and uh, just dropping both the regular transducer and the uh, side in, imaging transducer out back and with these, uh, you can uh, plop them up out of the way when you're done. Uh, through the hull method, um, a lot of guys had a lot of success just using duct seal. Um, just uh, go to your home hardware or your uh, Home Depot, I guess, and uh, purchase some duct seal. Put it inside your hull somewhere, uh, the lowest portion of it that, that you could and uh, work your transducer down into it and it, it's able to um, shoot right through the little bit of duct seal and through the uh, plastic hull and uh, give, you so, give you a really good image. Uh, the other method is uh, with marine goop. Uh, 
The only thing that you got to watch when you're doing it with the marine coop is you got to make sure that you don't get any bubbles in there. The uh, if, if there's a lot of bubbles when you when you do it and you set your transducer into the marine coop, it's going to it's going to uh, your transducer is going to read a lot of interference and you're not going to get a great signal and you're not going to get a good image. So make sure that when you when you pour the uh, marine goo boat, uh, there's no bubbles in it. And there's also another way. Yep, go ahead. Sorry. Um, and this is this is getting uh, close to the uh, question I was about ready to uh, to to ask. I did some installations of uh, of transducers on a kayak with um, the old noodles and um, you know and Vaseline and some. Yep. Uh, I guess 5200 or something like yep. that. So I guess that's similar to what you're doing yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it's, it's basically just got to be find some way to, you know, mount in some type of liquidy type setting without. Uh, but like I said, it, it, it for whatever reason uh, the transducers if there's bubbles in that stuff, whether it be a bunch of uh, Vaseline or not, it it, get, it gives the uh, the transducer reads a lot of interference. So just keep it nice and clean. Um, another method is through a wet box. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Hey, yeah. Tim, Mark Jones was asking if the through-hole duct seal, um, if you have any loss of quality with the method, with that method. Uh, every, I haven't done it personally myself, but everything that that uh, I've, I've read, um, lots of guys have used it, and they've got no complaints about the image whatsoever. So I, I haven't heard anybody have any complaint with that that method at all. It's it's pretty easy too. It's a lot less messy, and uh, when you're done, you can uh, peel it up and uh, move it to a new kayak or replace it and go to a new. Uh, if, you, if you upgrade your uh, your fish finder and a new transducer, it's nice and easy that way. It, it's uh, a little bit cleaner than the marine goop. The marine goop will, goop will still put, pull up though. You can still uh, you can still get that up as well. But as far as I've never heard of anybody complain about uh, any image quality. Um, here's a wet box style. Basically, um, this is how I have actually presently have in my one kayak. This is my setup. It's just a, a basic uh, plastic container. I've cut the bottom off of it. Uh, I've used some uh, foam. I think this is like a gardening uh, pad for for kneeling down in the garden that I've uh, cut uh, around the plastic and uh, just use marine goop to to seal it down uh, and make sure it's a, there's a good seal. Uh, I've fastened the transducer in the box and I just use this, uh, I added this little uh, pop bottle or top here. I can unscrew it and uh, fill it with water. Uh, sometimes water will splash out of this. This, this box doesn't happen to seal all that great but uh, it only comes out if I if it's really bumpy condition but it always gets me through so I just fill it up with water whenever I have to here's uh, the basically the same style this uh, this guy just used marine goop all the way around he didn't bother using the foam and uh, fixed his transducer on top and uh, fill it with water go ahead Hey Tim, how does the how does the transducer secure inside of the wet box? Uh, My, mine, I've got it on the bra I've got the regular transducer uh, mounting bracket, and it, it's bolted. To, if you can see in the image here, you can see a couple bolts. It's bolted to the back of uh, of this plastic container, and it, it just sits up, maybe about a, a quarter of an inch above the bottom of the um, of the kayak and uh, the box itself is full of water so it's it's just sitting in its own little water there and, and shooting right through that so it's it's just fastened right so, so the uh, the trans the transducer is not actually even touching the no, bottom of the kayak no, it, it's suspended. yeah it's suspended yeah so excellent yeah, yeah. Excellent. and this guy looks like he's made himself some type of uh, bracket and fixed it to the top here and then sealed the with a lot of marine goop up top so the water doesn't come up. And we can move on to batteries now. Um, the, there, the, I'll be honest with you, there's, there's all kinds of uh, batteries out there that you can be using. The, uh, the 12 volt 7 amp and the uh, uh, 12 volt 9 amp batteries are pretty well 
the standard out there. Um, they fit into uh, a lot of manufactured holders that are out there on, on the market for kayaks, so they fit in perfectly. Once you start getting up into the, um, the 10 amp and above, the, the size of the uh, batteries, uh, they don't fit in the manufacturer holder, so uh, you've got to come up with your own little way of holding it. Uh, uh, this is uh, one of the versions that I, I use to uh, keep my uh, battery in a nice dry box. Um, this was actually an old uh, cigar caddy that I, I used to have. And just happened to have it floating around and the battery fit in there perfectly. So I just uh, wired it in with um, uh, there's a 3 amp fuse in here that ran and uh, a disconnect that I would use to uh, power my um, uh, fish finder. Here's uh, the present version. Um, this is a manufacturer, well, this is a Hobie holder that holds the, uh, the battery in place. I've got a, a simple breakaway here that uh, I uh, unplug and uh, I can plug my battery charger into it and then I just uh, plug it back in to uh, my fish finder. Makes it uh, just just makes it a little more convenient to uh, charge uh, my battery, that's all. Uh, so, yep. Okay. Got a quick question from Johnny. We're backing up a yep. little yep. bit. Um, he was wondering about towing a transducer. Yes. Uh, towing it? Oh, oh, towing it from behind? Yeah, like the one version there? I was wondering what he means. If, if, if that's what he means, like towing it at, at the back. Um, yeah, is the only time that uh, as long as the water behind you and everything else is, is, is doesn't get too disturbed, it, it'll work well. Um, if you get a lot of cavitation back there and uh, disturbance back there, you'll run into an imaging problem with it. Uh, but generally, as a rule of thumb, kayak kayaks don't have too much of a problem with that. Um, as long as you can keep the um, the transducer down in the water and it's not lifting up all the time and it's running in fairly undisturbed water I guess you can say it, it you you shouldn't have a problem with imaging at all I've run it out the back of uh, I've had it set up on the back of my kayak like you saw in the previous version there with the guy with the the dual transducers and uh, it, it it works great and I had no issues with that at all uh, a friend of mine he actually has his um, side imaging mounted on the front uh, in, the, in a similar fashion that it drops down up front. Uh, this is a buddy of mine, um, Richard Burney. He's got um, he's got the sonar phone and he's running and I think he's running an iPad as well or uh, with with his so with Wi-Fi. But uh, he came up with uh, a convenient way to house his battery. He's got his uh, sonar farm mounted to the side of it. Nice and uh, he can just connect his transducer to it. Batteries inside. Uh, this is a Plano um, ammo box. Uh, you can pick these up for uh, about seven or eight dollars. Uh, they're they're nice. Actually, I I use one of these just to keep uh, on my kayak. I store my cell phone, um, all my extra batteries for my cameras. Uh, I actually keep my. Uh, few extra uh, gloves and stuff like that in it so they, these little Plano boxes are really nice and convenient but uh, Richard also added a, like your standard 12 volt uh, cigarette type lighter charger onto here and uh, the bolt, one on the bottom here this is a USB uh, charger so he's got uh, power to uh, charge his uh, iPad up uh, if it runs down. Charge his iPhone or his phone up if he it needs to, or any type of accessories that you want to add to uh, run some uh, extra power off of. Uh, these batteries will, with this setup, the sonar phone and um, this uh, this Wi-Fi box doesn't use a lot of power. Uh, a seven a seven a m amp uh, battery will last you a long time. Uh, so. So he's got a nice little. Uh, can, so go ahead. So even with the, um, if you're charging some accessories like an iPad, I know the iPad. Yeah. Um, I don't know how well it will do on the USB plug because yeah. I know you need a little bit, a little bit 
chunkier of a of a charger to, to charge the iPad. I don't know if the iPad Mini is any different, yeah. but uh, it does take a little bit more amperage to charge the iPad. Do you know if it um, good. if some of that is affected by that that uh, small battery? No, no. Uh, I'll, I, I run uh, I I run a little bit different setup. I'll show you later, but. Uh, and I plug my iPad Mini into that USB, and I can, I run it all day, and I have 100% power by the time I come off the water uh, on my my iPad Mini. So it, uh, gotcha. it gotcha. no problems whatsoever. I want to back up real quick. Johnny actually was asking about the the floating wireless transducers. Oh, okay. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I haven't. Um, yeah, Vexlar makes them. Um, I'm trying the, the teapot, and uh, I I haven't had any experience with them with, with that unit itself. I I haven't tested it out myself. Um, everything that I that I've seen, um, yeah, it 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 works on the same principle as uh, as the uh, the the T box. Just communicates with your device wirelessly. And it's got a sonar built into it. So um, with the Navionics app. You can uh, you'll you'll get your sonar and your chart plotter, and uh, you'll get all all that in one neat little package. But as far as far as I know, the the um, the teapot itself um, works great. But I but I haven't tested it out myself, so I, I would assume that you'd be able to uh, be able to tow it behind uh, behind your kayak as well. Actually. Uh, that's one thing I'll uh, I'll check with the guys at uh, Vexlar and see if uh, uh, they can answer that if anybody's tested it yet. Uh, there's another way of uh, storing your battery in your hatch cover. Um, this is another I think that's a Hobie as well holder. So uh, um, I'll be honest with you I don't uh, my hatch covers I don't these these ones I don't store a lot of stuff into them so might as well keep a battery in it. Uh, strictly, we'll get into uh, lighting and flags. Um, a flag is always a good idea um, uh, to uh, make yourself more visible uh, out on the water. Um, kayaks are, sit kind of low on, on the water and depending on conditions out there, uh, some of the uh, motor boaters out there aren't uh, aren't that great at, at seeing us so anything we can do to make ourselves a little bit more visible out there uh, the better uh, you, most your most jurisdictions require that you have a light after dark and before dawn uh, so that you're visible out on the water uh, this was one of my original versions of my light pole this is just a three dollar uh, driveway marker that I got from the dollar store uh, I think I paid three dollars for the flashlight there as well. I took uh, an old pill bottle. I, I ended up scratching the inside, it roughing up the inside of it, uh, warmed up the end a little bit, and it slipped right over the top of uh, uh, the flashlight. And uh, a few zip ties, some uh, orange cloth that I had floating around, attached to the pole, and away you go. And uh, I've got myself a, a light at night. And uh, I don't have the flag on here, but I had the flag with the flag. So those are, you know, if uh, you're budget conscious, this is a uh, something like this is cheap and it cheap, uh, easy to make. Uh, this is the present version I had. I think I think uh, this is, I found uh, this pool. The one thing I found that with the other version is uh, sometimes I would forget to uh, add add new batteries to the uh, the uh, light there so this year I've wired up uh, a light up uh, or some power and I've picked up uh, a pole added an LED light to it uh, and I think I've got a total of about $35 into this setup uh, I've, I've got a switch that will turn the light on at night for me so so that I'm nice and visible the, the uh, flags out there but there are a bunch of uh, Manufactured style uh, flag poles out there with with lights. Um, this is, I think, uh, Yak Attack version. Uh, this one, it's nice and neat. Uh, 
It uh, folds up when you're not using it. The flag itself, um, the flag itself um, is the carrying bag. Scotty makes one as well. And I, I happen to add uh, a little bit of uh, extra lighting to my to my uh, cockpit. Um, I fished a few early mornings when it's still dark out and sometimes it's uh, a little difficult to uh, hook up some new lures or change things around a little bit so I, I wired it up myself but uh, like I say I, I like to uh, dabble a little bit and, and play around and do those kinds of things. Uh, I paid I think it was $18 for uh, this pack of uh, LED lights. It, uh, the one pack gave me both sides gave me plenty of light. Uh, I picked up a switch panel that I wired in and this is the USB port that I use. I, uh, I plug my iPad into it all while I'm out there just so that it might so that it stays charged all the time. I was finding that the iPad mini if I didn't have an auxiliary um, charger or, or battery pack with me I was only getting maybe three or four hours out of the life of the battery on the iPad uh, without that. So this year with this kayak, I decided to uh, to wire in um, a switch panel and add the USB charger. I just run the cord right. My uh, my iPad sits right here, so the cord right in, right to it keeps it charged up. And if I need to charge up my cell phone, I got an extra port available for me. Um, I, I put my depth finder on uh, the Vexlar sonar phone on a switch. The uh, cockpit lightings and my all-around stern light back there is on a switch as well. Uh, yep. Tim? So one of the other uh, options that's out there for uh, keeping your iPhone and your iPads charged is the Snow Lizard yes. case. Yeah. Um, that has a built-in battery, uh, or the, the case itself is a battery, and it also has a solar panel yes. um, that is uh, uh, connected to the uh, case as well. So that is another option for people to keep their their devices charged. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Actually, actually, it's a it's a great little unit. It keeps it waterproof. Uh, it's got a solar charger. It's got an extra battery pack in it. It. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, is they they didn't make one for the iPad Mini yet. They make it for the all the iPhones and they make it for the iPad and it's actually uh, the one for the uh, the case for the iPad is a nice nice unit uh, you can add to, you can add a RAM mount uh, to the back of it it's uh, it's already got the um, the bolt or the uh, uh, <laughs> screws available for the uh, to, to uh, attach at the back uh, they're really it's a really nice unit but unfortunately for me uh, they didn't make it for the iPad Mini. I spoke with them actually, and I thought they were supposed to be coming out with one for the iPad Mini, but I just haven't seen it yet. But I hope they do. It's a really nice unit. Anchor, anchors, and anchor trolley system. Uh, there, there are a lot of a lot of guys have made up their own and uh, their own anchor trolleys. This is one of the areas where, uh, as much as I like to. Uh, cheap out, I uh, will call cheap out to uh, save money and uh, do whatever I can to make my own stuff. I enjoy uh, building my own things for my kayaks. Uh, this is just one area that it just for me wasn't worth it. <laughs> I think for about thirty dollars you can uh, you can buy these kits. Um, they're they're quick, simple, easy, neat. By the time you start going out there and building your own uh, you're probably going to be twenty dollars on the cheap side so um, if that so this is just uh, one of the things that uh, I decided to spend the money on the only thing that I changed here's another th um, when these come they've, they've got uh, the, this power the, this paracord here uh, has exposed hog rings right here I, I took mine apart and I've added the uh, shrink tube over top just to seal them up and so that the, that steel doesn't rub against the side of my kayak and scratch it up and what have you. But, so I just 
uh, tied these all up, used a little wire to hold, hold the lines together, throw some shrink tube over it, and away you go. The, the, the uh, anchor trolleys are a great way, um, depending on where you're, the current wind and everything else, you're going to want to either anchor either at the front, back, middle, depending on conditions. So the anchor trolley, it's nice and convenient to move your anchor to whatever position you need it, need it at, depending on, uh, given the wind and, and uh, current. Um, Quick question. I use um, a three pound claw type hanger, uh, anchor for the most part, uh, for, the, for the most conditions. Uh, this is what my what my present setup is. Um, this is, uh, like I said, a three pound um, uh, claw type hanger. There's also the mushroom type uh, anchors, but um, uh, which are good depending on the conditions you are. I mean, if you're in a lot of sunken brush and all that, this can be a bit dangerous if you're in a current because if it gets hung up. Um, and you can't get it out. You're, uh, you could be get yourself into a little bit of trouble. Uh, I've got it rigged up breakaway style. Um, the it is actually fastened on the bottom of the anchor with uh, a small zip tie up near the, this eyelet here. So what happens is if if it gets hung up and the 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 claws get stuck in some brush or a log or something down below. Um, you, you pull on it, it'll snap that zip tie, and then it'll end up pulling from the back, which uh, will, will, should release it from that, that obstruction and pull it out the other way. Uh, if you're going to use this claw type hanger or anchor, make sure you rig it this way because if you get this stuck and you can't get it out, you'll get yourself into a little bit of a predicament, especially if you're in current. Um, I've added an extra about 20 inches of heavy chain. The thing that I was finding that with the anchor just by itself, sometimes it won't bite in. Um, just, and I think that it was mostly as a result of because um, it wasn't weighted down at the at this one end and allowing those uh, arms to bite into the ground, into the sand or wherever you're at. Um, this little bit of chain made all the difference in the world. Adds a little bit of weight, but it also just holds down the chain or the anchor down at that at that uh, at that end of it, which it allowed it to bite in. And I, I've added um, this is just a, a dive reel that I got off of Amazon. Uh, I think there's about 150 feet of uh, of cord in there. Uh, the cord is plenty strong enough. Uh, it's nice and uh, nice seat nice easy way to to store the cord and and, and and so you can tuck it neatly away every time and let out line bring line in uh, live wells I'll be honest with you I don't have a use for your live well I, I'm a, I for freshwater fish and um, I just don't have a, uh, a use for live bait I use at the most of the that I'll, I'll use are live worms, but that's about it for me. But I thought I would add this anyways. Um, they are commercially available. For, they run about three hundred dollars a unit, if, uh, or you can do it yourself for about a hundred dollars. There, there's all kinds of uh, how tos online. I'll show you a few pictures in a second. Um, this is uh, one of your commercially available live well units. It, it comes with its own battery pack. Uh, it uses your scupper holes to um, to suck up fresh water and circulate it around so that your bait is uh, should stay alive a long time. Uh, with a pet food can do it for the do-it-yourselfers. Uh, you can go out there and get yourself uh, one of these uh, stackable pet food containers, a bilge pump, a little bit of tubing, and all that. I think for under a hundred dollars, you can uh, build your own. Uh, own, own live well. You're gonna have. You're gonna need a, a battery, of course, for it. And I think a lot of these guys use uh, six or six volt batteries to uh, run these bilge pumps, from what I've read. And you just need to get your your pump into the water, or or, or somehow or another get your line into the water to circulate fresh water. 
Here's the inside of uh, another version with the pump right inside. Uh, I'll dabble a little bit into cameras. Uh, I, I like to I like to videotape uh, every time that I'm out on the water. I, I like to keep it a record from for myself. Um, I also um, I also depending on your tournaments that you're in and everything else, you're going to need a still camera to uh, photograph uh, for your catch photo and release. Uh, um, your video and your still cameras, well, that all depend on what your budget is, uh, what you can afford and what you want to buy. I, um, I used to have a, a digital camera, that I, a cheap digital camera I used to carry out with me, but uh, now I just use my phone. I get good pictures with it. I've always got it out there with me, so it's nice and convenient to, nice and convenient to uh, take pictures of the fish that way, and I don't have to worry about that camera all the time. Uh, but make sure you're the camera that you've got, the cameras that you buy, either video or or your still cameras, are waterproof, or they come in a water, or they have a waterproof case for them. It, it's inevitable that somehow or another it will get wet. If you're going to invest in a video camera to record, um, I rec recommend that you get one with a remote. remote. Uh, Depending on your camera and everything else, I mean, there's a lot of times that you won't want it running just because uh, you're wasting battery life and everything else. So um, it's nice and easy to, uh, if, if your unit comes with a remote, you can stop recording and go, if you're going off to another area, start recording again. Yep. yep. Um, do you have any experience with the GoPro camera and the um, iPhone remote that they have to operate the GoPro camera? Uh, I, I don't have, uh, not not for the GoPro. Um, I don't, don't have, uh, I have another um, another phone that, or uh, another camera that does work Wi-Fi. The only, if you're going to, yeah, depending on what you're using, um, yeah, you can, yeah, the, for as far as I know, with the the GoPro, it, you can sync it with your your phone. I think it's Wi-Fi, and you can um, you can control it that way. And you, and and you can also see the image that you're recording at at the, at the time on your phone to get an idea. Of, you, know, you know that uh, the picture is good, um, and you can start start and stop your recording. Yeah, they do. They do have. Uh, yeah, they do have uh, an app yeah. that um, gives you the screen. Um, that shows you what you're filming at the yep. time, and it also acts as a remote. And they also have, on the newer cameras, they have a, a screen that you can put on, like a backpack onto that oh, okay. GoPro camera yep. that will give you a screen as well. So there's a couple of different options for, for cameras and remotes. Yep. Perfect. Yep, and here we go. Um, the GoPros generally, um, I didn't go with the GoPro initially. Uh, that The main reason was battery life. Um, the GoPros initially there wasn't uh, really anything out there with an extended battery for them. There was a lot of guys that would um, um, that would rig up their their waterproof cases and add a cord to it and drill through and add a cord to uh, get to an, uh, an auxiliary battery pack that way. Um, there are a number of manufacturers out there right now that are making extended battery packs for them in a waterproof case. So um, that is that is improved. Uh, uh, the GoPro in my eyes anyways, the, the battery life was always the issue with me when I first started. It just, uh, it would only give you a couple or an hour or so of, of record time, which, get, I mean, I can be out on the water for eight hours at a time, so if you're only getting an hour worth of recording, what's the use, right? So that's your GoPro, and that's the uh, uh, the GoPro uh, remote that you can, you, that you can purchase uh, for it. So it's nice and easy to, you know, start stop your recording. Like I say, uh, a friend of mine uh, picked up uh, one of the new battery packs for it, and I think he's getting over four hours worth of record time on, on the extended battery uh, for battery pack for his. So, yep. Hey, so it looks like Johnny Sweeney has had some experience with it, and I wanted to see if we could get Johnny to tell us. Um, what is the experience with the uh, GoPro camera was? Okay. 
Hey, Johnny, I've unmuted you now. Well, t tell us about your experience with the uh, GoPro camera and, and your success that you've had with it. Um, well, the, the remote's definitely, um, a, a, I'd say, key to have. Um, and the, the neat thing about the, uh, the iPhone app is a little bit of a battery drainer, so you'd want to have some sort of uh, power uh, capability. Um, it works with the older GoPros, but you can't see the picture. So you have to have a GoPro 3 or newer to see the picture in the camera. But one of the neat things is, is uh, if you have multiple cameras, like you might have a camera on a mast um, you know, behind you uh, looking forward, and you might have one on the bow pointed back at you, so you could do like a multiple camera shoot, which you could use like a GoPro app or other video editing software to put the video together. But you can control the multiple cameras from the app on the phone. So what I think is neat, and kind of the reasons why I'm looking at this, is using the um, the, the Navionics app and the and the Vexler system. Uh, if you had it all on a on an iPad or a um, uh, an iPhone, and you were using that, you could also flip back and forth between the GoPro app and then the uh, the Chart Plotter app to control the cameras, and also you know use the Fish Finder. So you kind of uh, all in one solution. Uh, yeah. I think the only issue might be with that though is it um is is the um GoPro app is that Wi Fi as well? Because if if it's Wi Fi you you won't be able to connect the um two white Wi Fi devices simultaneously. Yeah, so you'd have to Yeah, the uh, GoPro is Wi Fi. Yeah. So that that'll that that's a, that'll be the only issue is that you'll have you, <laughs> you you'll you'll have one or the other running at, at at one time. You'll have to switch back. Johnny, thank you so much for your your input. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, a lot of good insight. Thanks. Um, there, there are other cameras like uh, the Mono Price uh, one. It's a uh, roughly about 170. It, it's also marketed under the name of Wasp Cam. Um, it, this is what I, I actually presently use, and, and like I said, the reason why I, I started using this, um, there, there's an extended battery pack for, for it, and uh, it gave, gave me four hours on, the, on a charge. Um, so for, for the price, it, it just worked out conveniently for me. They, they use these little wristwatch type uh, remotes. I actually have uh, two two cameras going uh, at the same time, so I have, each one has its own little room, uh, wristwatch remote. I've got them strapped to my PFD, and I can start and stop stop whichever one I want. So, but there these are out there. They're under a few different names, but uh, but uh, I, I, like I say, now with the GoPro, with the the battery packs and everything else, it's uh, an option I'd like to explore. And uh, the the other one of ones that I see that are they're popular is uh, it's just a, a cheap um, uh, action camera. It stay through that. It has a Wi-Fi, but I believe that it doesn't have its own remote. It uh, it works off an app as well, so you'll have to either control it through your um, your phone. So those are just some of the options that are out there for cameras. Um, here's a few different camera mounts. This is what I, I this is my present setup. Um, this is just a, a dollar store uh, pole that I got. It's uh, like a painter painter's pole. Uh, this is a ram mount camera mount that they have. Uh, I can articulate it in many different ways. This uh, faces back towards me. And I use I just use this for what we like to call the hero shot. Uh, when I catch that that fish, I like to hold it up, take a little video of that, and uh, uh, I'll take screenshots later for pictures and that. Uh, that'll, uh, or I can run it and it, depending if I'm fighting a fish behind me I can do that. But uh, I sort of rigged up my little uh, other camera onto my hat. I like the point of view um, shot. Uh, I get a lot of great video this way and uh, I, I just like this view. Uh, but there are many options out there for camera mounts. Uh, a lot of guys will have um, a similar type of camera set up behind them to get the um, the view that way, rather than have the point of view or uh, one 
uh, like on my hat cam there. You can get it uh, right from behind you, then, or you can use these up front as well. Uh, get a good view that way. These are these are a few different. Uh, I think this is the dog bone uh, one. Uh, this is another yak attack one. This is a. Uh, I think it's called the green fish. Uh, can't remember the official name, but it's a uh, green fish camera mount. No, uh, green fish CPR. I think it is. So these are a couple of uh, options that you've got. Uh, there are also uh, a lot of uh, do-it-yourself camera mounts out there. Okay, well I thought I'd throw this in anyways, but if you're doing uh, competitions out there, uh, and, and a lot of the, um, all pretty much all the uh, kayaks, um, tournaments, uh, competitions, and everything else are catch, photo, and release. So you're going to need some type of um, measuring device out there to uh, record the length of your fish. So we all use bump boards. Uh, these are a few of my my present setups. Um, the hog trough is pretty well the uh, standard out there. Pretty well every bass tournament uh, that you you will go to in uh, in kayaking, they will require you to have a hog trough. Uh, to to take the photo of the fish on. Uh, the only problem with the hog troughs is, is, is they work great for bass because I know, know too many bass that are over 30 inches. But when you start getting up into the bigger fish, uh, pike and everything else, uh, you're going to be over 30 inches. I happen to uh, made a few of my own. Uh, this is a 40 inch board and these are a couple boards that I use for musky fishing. Um, uh, this is a manufactured one by Handlebars, uh, Musky Lures. Uh, he generally makes these ones in a foldable type, but I, uh, in the kayak, I don't like I don't like it hinged. It flops around too much on me. I like a solid board to to lay the fish across, and uh, I find it a lot better. I find the hinged one just moves around too much on on me. Uh, if you're going to build your own. Uh, Look for cellular PVC uh, fascia boards at uh, Home Depot. Uh, that's what I make. The, uh, that's what I made these out of. The good thing about these is that they float. Uh, nothing worse than having uh, um, nothing worse than having to drop your board over and lose it. Okay, that pretty well wraps it up. Um, I'm open for any questions if you'd like. If uh, if not, if you have any questions in the future or anything that you want me to uh, look into for you or help out or suggestions on anything in the future you want me to to do on, uh, you can email me at uh, timpercy at navionics.com. Tim, we did have one question from uh, Denny Souza. Yep. Um, and one from uh, 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 Sebastian. Uh, from Denny, he says, uh, provided that there is a nice flat area on the bow of the kayak, are there any pr uh, uh, practical issues um, uh, with mounting a bow mount trolling motor on the bow of the kayak? Um, I, d I, I, I don't know that, that there are any practical issues with it. Um, might be a little difficult to to reach and everything else on the bow. Um, I've known uh, there. I know that a lot of guys have had them uh, have rigged up trolling motor motors at at the stern, but um, I haven't I haven't really seen any on the bow. But there are a lot of uh, a lot of guys out there, do it yourselfers, that have uh, rigged up um, uh, trolling motors, and there's actually there. There's a number of manufacturers out there that have uh, um, that make a system that they, that you can hook up a, a motor to your kayak. And the last question, because uh, I know we need to wrap it up yep. here, is from is from Mr. Lemay, mm -hmm. and he he's asking if you have any problems with the USB cable uh, for the iPad not being waterproof on, on rainy days. <laughs> I, I I haven't. Uh, had that issue yet? Um, it could be um, that on a rainy day. Um, the I I, ha I have mine in a lightproof, uh, my iPad in a lightproof case.
So the only thing that that is exposed is the um, actual where, where the cable goes in at the bottom. Um, so rain rain won't affect it won't affect it that it shouldn't affect it that way because it's uh, it's pretty well covered up on the bottom of the iPad in the uh, in, in the holder. So it the likelihood of rain affecting it won't be at all. So uh, that but should it should I happen to turtle and go in um, that port would be exposed. So. Yeah. If there are no other questions, I think that's about that's it. That's perfect. Well, thanks everybody for joining me, and uh, I hope you got a little bit of something out of it. And if you have any questions uh, or comments, uh, please email me at uh, timpercy at navionics.com. Thanks again, everybody.